It took me exactly 35 days to land my first job in Canada. And in this video, I will share my story and a step-by-step -step process of what I did to get my first job in Canada so quickly. Let's go! When I moved to Canada, I had five years of experience in engineering in oil and gas industry in my home country, Russia. My English language level was CLB9, and I hold a master's degree in my field. I received my PR through Express Entry program as a federal skilled worker. I still remember that day. It was an exciting and thrilling moment. I also knew that the hardest part was ahead of me. I had a lot to prepare for, from packing to finding accommodation to saying goodbye to friends and family, and most importantly, starting to look for a job in Canada. About three months before my flight to Canada, I registered for pre-arrival services called SOPA. It's a career service available only for PR newcomers to Canada. With the help of SOPA and rigorous research about Canadian job market in my field over the next two months, I had my LinkedIn updated and my general resume and cover letter ready. I also had my elevator pitch practiced and I started expanding my LinkedIn network based on what I learned. Honestly, at that time I felt more confident because I learned how to approach people on LinkedIn for networking purposes, how to talk about myself about my skills, my strengths, basically how to sell myself. And next, I made a list of about 20 to 30 companies where I was interested to work. And by the way, the company that hired me was in that list. What I've realized is that most people don't respond anyways. So I just told myself, if I don't do it, I'm guaranteed not to make any progress. But if I do keep doing it, my chances of success are increasing, and that's all I needed. So my desire to get a job was stronger than the fear of talking to strangers. Eventually, I created templates of invite messages, depending on who I would add, whether it's my peer or hiring manager or HR, and it made the outreach process much easier. I would always make sure to personalize the message for each connection type. Only a few people ended up saying yes to a video call. Those conversations were so stressful. I remember I prepared for them like it was my final exam in school. I went through the questions to ask in my head again and again and again. I had notes on everything I wanted to share about my background. I also took notes on the conversation and I had Google Translate and Google Search open in case I urgently needed to translate or find something. Honestly, in retrospect, it felt like a mission to Mars or something. As a result, I've ended up meeting several great people who kindly helped me get the gist of my industry in Canada and helped me choose the city I want to move to. They also calmed my nerves, because the more information I gathered, the more I knew exactly what I had to do to get my first job in Canada. And with that, I gained more and more confidence in my success. So. With all that preparation and knowledge and my resume in hands, I landed in Toronto in the beginning of February 2019. The first few weeks in Canada were incredibly stressful, not only mentally and emotionally, but also physically. I booked an Airbnb for the first two months and it was a room in one of the neighborhoods in Toronto. First things first, I had to do a bunch of usual tasks like get my SIM card, open a bank account, get my SIM number. By the way, I've talked about all these steps in this video and you can find the link to it in the description box below. And then my main task was to find the job. No sightseeing, no parties, no friends in the new country. I had a tunnel vision on finding a job. One day, I visited a newcomer center in one of downtown locations, since I knew I had so much to learn about this new life in the new country. I highly recommend leveraged newcomer services available in every major city in Canada. When I went there, the lady at the newcomer center suggested me to look into one particular newcomer service called Access Employment, since it has engineering connections program that specializes in working with engineers and helps them with job search. So I called them 
and they said that they had just stopped accepting applications for the season and the next intake will start only several months later. I didn't want to wait, so I basically begged them to give me an exception and I promised them that I would make sure to get all my documents ready ASAP if they let me in. I got lucky. They liked how proactive I was and they said yes. My advice here would be to make sure you do your research on what newcomer services are available for your profession in the city and make all the necessary arrangements before you arrive in Canada. So just in a couple of days, I started attending those job search and networking courses with them. And we were assigned a mentor, one mentor for a group of about 20 people. And that's where it hit me. I realized how competitive the job market in Canada is, especially in a big city like Toronto. I wasn't just competing with Canadians for the job, I was also competing with newcomers. All of my classmates were engineering specialists with many more years of experience than me. Many of them held senior positions in their home countries. Some of them had English as their first language. Some of them also spoke French and many people held multiple degrees and were very skilled in specific areas. I knew I had to act fast and I had to be on the top of my game. I knew I would lose on some aspects of skills and experience, so I focused on being resourceful too. Speaking of newcomer services, first, the beauty is that they're free of charge for those who hold PR because they are sponsored by the government of Canada. Second, they have network and connections with many employers. So that service center would occasionally send us job openings from different employers that they were partnered with. I decided not to wait for those job openings and start applying on my own. So when I started those access employment courses, I had lessons from 9 till around 2 p.m. every day. They would teach us a thing during the class and then I would come home and implement the knowledge immediately. I updated my resume over and over again. I would search for job postings on my own every day, tailor my resume to the job posting and apply over and over again. Apart from applying through the website, I would also leverage my new connections on LinkedIn to get more information about the job and to get referrals. I also continued adding engineering managers, future colleagues, HR managers in the company and to connect with them to increase my LinkedIn profile visibility. I also made sure to make my LinkedIn as good as possible. I asked my classmates and mentors to endorse my LinkedIn profile and share their feedback on what to improve. I was hustling every single day. Honestly, it was a lot of work and only to get no response to my applications. My mentors told me that it takes around one to three months from the moment you apply to the time you get invited to an interview. It all depends on how efficient and quick the company is with screening potential candidates and how many people apply for the job opening. Generally, the larger the company, the longer you would have to wait. And that hurt my confidence a lot. I was alone, unemployed, in the new and very expensive country, and that was scary. And I feel like that fear pushed me forward. I would wake up early every day to commute to those classes for three hours back and forth, then come back, have dinner and search, search, search. Read, 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 apply, reach out to people, write messages on LinkedIn, send emails and fall asleep late at night only to wake up six hours later for my 9 a.m. classes and the cycle repeats again. As a result, I lost a few pounds in weight during the first months in Canada. That's how stressful and energy consuming it was. One day, while I was in a class, I received a message on LinkedIn. It was a recruiter reaching out to me based on the information I put on my LinkedIn account. My hard work on LinkedIn profile and all the networking finally paid off. At least that's what I thought at the moment. She was looking for someone with my skills for a position at Enbridge. I was super excited since Enbridge was in my list of companies I liked. It's one of the biggest oil and gas companies in North America. There was one small caveat though. The position was in a small town called Chatham, which is three and a half hours away from Toronto. But whatever, I finally got an interview. Of course I said yes, and we scheduled a phone call. And it didn't go super well. 
First of all, I was super nervous. I struggled to properly articulate myself and I couldn't fully understand the questions that were asked. And the first interaction was a sharp reminder of the language barrier that I would have to overcome in my quest for employment. Talking on the phone in your second language on such a serious topic is nerve-wracking for any newcomer. I did make sure to smile and I think the recruiter could feel that, so our conversation wasn't dull or monotonous. She told me that the salary was non-negotiable. It wasn't a lot and there was no relocation package. The opportunity of working remotely didn't even exist back then and eventually they invited me for a second interview but I had to travel all the way to Chatham to have an interview in person. It was exciting to finally get some traction, but it wasn't what I was exactly looking for. I didn't know much about Chatham and wasn't even sure whether the salary offered would be enough to cover my living expenses there. So I had to do my research and it turned out it wasn't that bad. Chatham is a small town with an affordable cost of living. Well, at least it was back in 2019. Also, despite the low pay and relocation, I thought that having such a big company name like Enbridge on my resume would just look really good for any future career advancement. So I said yes to the interview. And the next thing I remember, I woke up early in the morning to get to Union Station and travel three hours to Chatham to have my first Canadian job interview. I arrived to Chatham earlier, so I stopped at McDonald's to get breakfast and to do one last prep. I had written down a list of questions to expect and a list of questions that I wanted to ask. So I read it again and practiced it all in my head while sipping coffee and chewing a breakfast sandwich at some busy loud McDonald's. I also went through the company's website to check their projects, about us page and looked up LinkedIn profiles of my interviewers. I was more prepared than ever. I felt calm and confident, maybe slightly anxious, which is not that bad because I like to use that adrenaline to help me focus. I also brought a portfolio of my previous work with me. The whole interview took about an hour. I tried my best to feel the vibe and show the culture fit as well as my skills fit. I also showed them my portfolio and I think that was the winning point. And the company was looking for someone with exactly my skill set, and I made an emphasis on that. In the end of the interview, the manager gave me a quick tour around the office and introduced me to a few people. Those people later became my colleagues, so now thinking back to that first meeting, it makes me kind of emotional, because they were such a great group of people, and I do miss them. The next day, I sent a thank you email to my interviewers. As a result, that interview three and a half hours away from Toronto in a small random town got me my first job offer in the same week. That was exciting and uplifting. I felt such a relief. The first Canadian job search quest was over. My classmates were still attending those classes with Access Employment and I remember they were having a mock job interview class all while I was planning my move to Chatham to start my first job in Canada in my field. That felt unreal. What I think helped me succeed is that I did everything by the book. I approached the process diligently, carefully and very seriously. I didn't slack or skip any steps. I overprepared every single step on the way getting resume ready, gaining a deep knowledge of my skills and strengths and learning how to talk about them and sell myself on the Canadian job market. I had a portfolio ready to show my hard skills, even though a portfolio is not very common in my profession. I just went an extra mile and it paid off. I never stopped building my LinkedIn network in my field to increase my profile visibility and I learned about the industry. I want to make a special shout out to networking. It's crucial. That's how I got my second job less than a year later. But that's the story for another day. Good self-esteem, confidence and stress resistance are also important personal characteristics. Think about it. If you don't believe in yourself, why should others? It wasn't easy for me as I am naturally very cautious and self-critical. But this process helped me grow, not just professionally, but also personally. Thank you for sticking with me till the end of the video. If it was helpful and encouraging for you, simply tap the like button below and it will warm my heart. If you are coming to Canada soon, I wish you the best of luck in your journey. A special shout out to our Patreon supporters. Thank you. 
And if you would like to support our channel even more, you can join our YouTube membership. I'll see you in the next one and take care.